It's often a problem with landlords when they want to serve notice because they suddenly unexpectedly realise that they haven't sought out their deposit protection properly. It's a bit unfortunate given how long tenancy deposit protection has now been in force and is a real object lesson as to why landlords need to keep themselves up to date and aware of what's going on. Um, there, are, there are three essential fixes for having failed to protect a deposit properly. Um, the first set of fixes is if you've protected the deposit but not served all the prescribed information, then you can serve the necessary prescribed information. And at that point, the deposit's correctly protected, you can immediately then serve a Section 21 notice. But no, prescribed information first, then notice in that order. Now, you are still potentially liable for the financial penalties at that point for failing to protect the deposit properly, but at least you can serve a notice and get your property back. If you've completely messed up, and the deposit has never been protected with a scheme and no prescribed information has been served, you can't just protect. That won't solve your problem. The require, there, are, there are three legal po possible options. Either you return the deposit to the tenant in full. Fairly obvious one, really. And, and in practice, quite a lot of landlords do that. Um, you might backs transfer, or even it, it'll be used fibers in, in an envelope and stuck through the door. Um, Sometimes tenants are funny about this and will try to refuse accepting it, which is why in some cases you end up with the used fibers in an envelope through the door. Obviously make sure you have evidence, so time, time, time and date stamp photographs or something like that of actually doing it, or take someone with you when you, when you, when you do the deed. You don't need to get into a fight about it and, and knock on the door and thrust it at them and shout. An envelope through the door will be fine. So you can return the deposit, first option. Second option is you can agree deductions from the deposit with the tenants. A lot of landlords overlook this option, it's quite effective. If the tenant's in rent arrears, for example, the classic thing to do is simply to email the tenant and say to them, you're in rent arrears, how about we simply deduct the deposit from your arrears and reduce your arrears? Many tenants will unsurprisingly say yes to that. If they do, then you've agreed deductions from the arrears, you can then serve a Section 21 notice, problem solved. And to some extent the tenant's got out, something out of it as well. Because the, the deposits have uh, been, been deducted from their arrears, their liability is reduced. Third option, and the least, least favourable, is to be sued by the tenant for failing to protect the deposit and lose and pay or have the case dismissed or withdrawn by agreement. Clearly not the way you want to go. Obviously with the first two options, I should stress again that it doesn't exempt you from the financial penalty. So the fact that you've Return the deposit to the tenant or agree deductions doesn't mean the tenant can't come after you for the financial penalties for failure to protect. But again, landlords often get very upset about this point, but we should bear in mind here that the property is worth a lot more and securing control of that is, a, is the priority and should be the priority in these cases. Mm -hmm.